Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about something that I just think is weird. Uh, not good or bad or ugly, just kind of strange to me. Uh, we'll talk about some reasons why things might be the way they are. And uh, I will try to um, remain not complaining about this, just explaining. Not, I don't want to complain, I want to explain. Sometimes I'd really need to complain, and you, you, you'll hear it, but uh, this one, just get a nice walk through why look, what I think, uh, one aspect of lookup costing that I think is really weird. Now, it's not that, like, something that I will normally complain about is that SQL Server is very much stuck in the spinny disk era of lookup, of, like, I.O. costing generally. Uh, this is different from that, so you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. This is just the difference, uh, well, the lack of a difference, really in lookup costing between heaps and clustered indexes. All right, so let's go with that. So uh, I've created a temp table already ahead of time because if you, well, you can't see it because I'm in the way, but it takes about six seconds and uh, I've wasted enough of your time babbling. So matching me like move data around is probably not on your like top 10 list for uh, ways you're gonna spend your life. So uh, I've already created this uh, table called votes. It is a heap. There is no indexing on it currently. We're gonna look at how indexes change things in a minute. But um, yeah, right now there's, there's, there's just no order to this thing. It is just a, just a heap of nonsense. And if we run this query right here to look at uh, the sort of page or index structure stuff for the heap, uh, we're going to have this big, long, confusing table name, uh, but we're going to collapse that a little bit because no one needs to see that <laughs> uh, absolute barrage of underscores. Uh, and if we zoom in here, uh, so th this is a heap. So it, is, it has an index depth of 1 and an index level of 0 to contain everything. This is just how heaps look. Uh, all 242,798 pages uh, are just flat across, kind of, and you can see the record count is about almost 53 million rows, so a fairly impressive row-to-page ratio, I think. I'm, you know, sort of. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to look at fragmentation. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, if we go come down here and run this query, necessarily, because it is a heap and we have no index with which we can find this data, uh, if we look at the I.O. output, and you're just going to have to, like, trust me. Oops, uh, that, that was the wrong Windows key. We're just, you're just going to have to trust me that this is the votes table because I'm going to just knock this whole thing out um, so it's not in the way. But, uh, yeah, we got to read all 242,798. We're going to scan that whole thing. Right. And, of course, uh, this has a scan count of 9 because it is a parallel query plan. Uh, at DOP8, and for some reason, uh, that gets count, counted as nine scans, right? So uh, the, the coordinator thread also apparently gets included as a scan, but uh, this whole thing just ran at DOP8, right? If you look at this, DOP8, if we come over here, look, uh, no, you can't really see much there, but uh, if you look at the number of executions, uh, it is also eight here, but... Uh, stats IO counted as nine, so. I'm only using it for convenience. I'm, I, don't, I don't use stats timer IO when I'm tuning queries generally. I look at the stuff in the query plans because it's there and it's easier. I don't like switching over to a messages tab to look at stuff. Um, so, there, we got that. Anyway, let's go add a filtered non-clustered index to this table. So this filtered non-clustered index is going to get us uh, exactly to the data that we care about in our where clause. All right, so good for us. We've done it. I'm going to create this index, and we're going to look at what changes. All right, so first let's look at that, uh, the index structure again. And now we're going to have a couple extra rows in here for the new index that we just created. All right, let's get rid of this stuff. And we will have, we still have the heap with its 242,000 pages, but now we have a non-clustered index with an index depth of two, right? And all 2,286 rows 
in this index are on six pages, which is also very, I think it's a very, very good row to page ratio. It's, it's excellent. Good job, SQL Server. He nailed it. Right? And just because the bounty amount column is an integer and there's 2,000, like we just don't need a lot of data pages to fit that one column filtered down to that one little bit of data. So if we go run this query now, let me see, hello. And we look at the execution plan. We have a RID lookup, right? An RID lookup, row identifier, because uh, that's how SQL Server like keeps track of unique rows in a heap. We don't have a, we don't have like a clustered index. We get a row identifier. Uh, we're not going to talk about, you know, uh, when heaps are good or bad. This is just something that I find kind of interesting. So if we come over here and we look at the, uh, the stats IO output, and let's delete this line because there's nothing useful in there. And once again, we're going to get rid of this incredible amount of underscores. And we're just going to zoom in on this. I'm going to see that we did 2,294 logical reads, right? So it's like the 2,286 uh, rows like we just did a thing and we had to do some extra reads and some navigating. So close enough to like the number of rows that are actually in the non-clustered index. It's fine, right? But if we go over and look at the query plan and we look at the costing, eh, come on, buddy, help me out here. Uh, I, I do that so that the, the tool tip shows up in a way that I don't block it or it doesn't like, it's not like cut off or anything annoying. So if we look at the costing for this, uh, we have 2,286 executions, uh, and then we have our estimated costs, right? Remember, costs are not actual real-life anythings. They are unitless, meaningless metrics that the optimizer uses to come up with an execution plan, right? It's just in, it's internal stuff so that SQL Server can, like, figure out what it thinks the cheapest plan will be, right? So uh, the... We have 2,286 executions. We have uh, the total operator cost of the lookup is 7.46 something query bucks. And then the estimated IO and CPU costs are very, very low. But if you add those together and then multiply them by 2,286, you actually get a slightly higher number. It's like, it was like 7.5 something. So I'm guessing that there's like some cost reduction that happens after like the initial read because SQL Server does assume a cold cache. Right, it doesn't assume anything is in memory when you when a query starts up. So it assumes all the I.O. is going to have to be done on disk, which, you know, we've talked about this. But, uh, that's, that's how things start up. So maybe there's some cost reduction after the initial, like, like lookup thing. This is like, oh, well, now the data, pay, now the data is going to be in memory. So these might be a little cheaper. So uh, close enough, though, right? Like this. Like, just remember those numbers, 0.003125, 0.001581, and the 7.46856, right? So all very easy numbers to remember. No problems there. Now, let's backtrack a little bit, and let's, let's touch our table one more time with a unique clustered index. Now, when I add this unique clustered index, uh, two things are going to happen. Uh, the table is now going to be a clustered table. Right now, it's a, it's a good term that I heard uh, from Tim Chapman, a smart fellow who works at Microsoft. Uh, he used that term rather than clustered index because uh, some folks do get confused when they hear clustered index. So now they think that there's, there's like this magical heap structure and also a clustered index. But there's no, you just cluster the table. Right? So it's a good, good, good thing to do there, right? Good thing to remember. Uh, so that's going to happen. And the other thing that's going to happen is this index is going to get rebuilt using the clustered index key column ID as the row identifier rather than the in internal RID that a heap uses. Uh, this took a lot longer when I wasn't using a filtered index because you basically had to create 152 million un row unique index to cluster the table, and then you had to rebuild the 52 million row non-clustered index, and that was, a, that was a, not a good use of leisure time. Right? This is like, like an incomplete on that in kindergarten. <laughs> very, very bad use of leisure time. Uh, so now, now that we have a clustered index and a non-clustered index, let's look at how that table index stuff is laid out now. So uh, the first thing you're going to notice, most likely, is that we no longer have that single... Uh, let's, let's, ah, I forgot to do that. I'm so forgetful. Well, let's zoom in on this now. So the first thing you might notice is that we have... Oh, zoom it. Be my friend today. Uh, this changes a little bit, didn't it? Right? We no longer have that one row for the heap and the two rows for the non-clustered index. Now we have three rows for the non-clustered index. 
So there's uh, one page up at the very top of the index, like the root page, and there's uh, 395 records in there, and then there's 395 pages with 242,000 records, and then there's uh, 242,000 pages for 52 million records, and like we have a much deeper index now, don't we? We don't just have that flat heap structure. We have three rows, or the three levels of index. So that's interesting. But uh, what's even more interesting, I think, is that when we run this, uh, the, and we look at the Messages tab, again, we're going to get rid of this work table line because it's useless, and we're going to delete all these underscores. And we're just going to zoom in and look at the logical reads. So now we have 7,015 logical reads. Interesting, huh? We did a lot. We did about 3x the logical reads is when we just had the heap. Because now we have to navigate all that clustered index stuff. And now I'm not saying clustered indexes are bad. Because I think for, in SQL Server for transactional tables are pretty great. Uh, in SQL Server heaps are pretty great for staging tables and stuff. But um, I think one thing that probably happened like a long time ago is like someone might have been like testing clustered indexes versus heaps and come across like maybe a plan with lookups in it. And they might have seen something like, like oh, maybe it's a little faster with the lookups because, you know, uh, like we don't have to navigate the whole clustered index thing. And like maybe we did fewer logical reads with a clustered index. My goodness. You gotta, gotta have those low logical reads or else. So, uh, you, you, like someone might have been comparing them, might have been like, well, clustered indexes would make everything slow. Why would we want them? <laughs> this sounds terrible. Why would we ever have a clustered index? We do all these logical reads now with a clustered index. Bummer. Uh, but oh, for, now if we look at the query plan, what's interesting, right, is now we have a key lookup rather than that rid lookup. But if we zoom in on this and we look, uh, we have the same number of executions but we also have the exact same costing, right? So uh, SQL Server doesn't actually cost key and RID, like key or RID lookups any differently. It's the same numbers in there, 7.468560.0.003125, 0 0.0001581, it's the same numbers, right? So there's no cost difference uh, to SQL Server when it's looking at uh, either heaps or clustered indexes. Right? And these queries, I mean, there's so few rows that like the, the timing on these is almost indistinguishable. So this isn't going to be, this isn't like a performance test. This is just like something to show you like what, like the, how the costing is the same. Now you might be wondering why the costing is the same. And I was too. And uh, I was gently reminded by a, a client in New Zealand that um, when you have a, uh, that rather that, uh, in early versions of SQL Server query plans, there was no uh, distinguishing between um, the key and read lookups. Everything was just called a bookmark lookup. It was one single operator. Uh, I think it was around like SQL Server 2005 when that changed, when you had some distinguishing between key and read lookups. So that's probably why there's just one unified costing strategy for key or bookmark lookups, despite the fact that there is a physical like difference in the structure between key and uh, between clustered indexes and clustered tables and heap tables. So uh, it is kind of weird and it might be kind of misleading um, depending on how you approach query tuning uh, and depending on how you, uh, you know, design your non-clustered indexes as well, where if, if you were, you know, uh, just, you know, doing a basic sanity test of like, you know, should this table have a clustered index on it, which, you know, if, I mean, I don't know how many people are starting brand new databases from scratch these days. Most of the databases I see have been around since, I don't know, forever. Like, there's, there's a lot of, if you cut them open, there's a lot of rings. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, it's one of those things where like if you were, you know, in the like very early days of SQL Server, you just didn't understand, or like you're building a new database now, but maybe your knowledge is not so expansive about like, you know, clustered indexes, primary keys, you know, non-clustered indexes, query plans, all this other stuff. You might, you know, test having a heap versus having a clustered index and think, wow, look at this query. It does all these extra logical reads of the clustered index. It's a, a, a three nanoseconds slower. Better, better just leave that cluster index out. But that's, that's a pretty big mistake, I think, for most SQL Server workloads. So uh, you should not, um, you should not 
probably consider that as, as part of your strategies. Heaps, great staging tables, clustered indexes, very good for transactional stuff. Anyway, uh, that's about enough of this. Um, uh, thank you for watching. I love you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe, I'm di maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm indifferent. Maybe we just haven't met yet. Maybe someday I will love you. Um, and when I, if I do love you, I will always love you. The darling data promise. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope you watch more videos. If you, if you like this video, the thumbs up button help, lets me know that you liked it. Otherwise, I just see views, and I don't see thumbs ups, and I think, wow, what, what happened? Uh, if you like this sort of SQL Server content, I, I do try to publish as often as possible, uh, both my blog and the videos. Uh, so you should subscribe to my channel if you want to get more of this stuff, because I, like, I don't know where else people get it from these days. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you uh, in the next video, whenever, whenever that may be. I love you. <laughs>